Hi everybody, welcome back for another video on IELTS Writing Task 1. Today we're looking again at pie charts. Today I won't be talking about all the details for how to get uh, 7 or 8, so check out the uh, card here. That'll take you to a video that goes into more detail. Today we're just going to look at the chart and we're going to start writing, so let's take a look right now. All right, so in this video, you will see how I typically teach my students to analyze and organize their IELTS writing answers and use a range of grammatical structures. Uh, let's get right to the pie charts. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look. The following charts show the percentage of electricity production by fuel source in France in 1990 and 2010, so we have two points in the past. I'm going to ask you right now to take five minutes, press pause, and do your own analysis. All right, I trust all of you took a look and uh, made your analysis, and you have very good notes. We're going to take a look at my notes. All right, so let's look at this quite clearly. First of all, we do have a very clear overall in this pie chart. I think all of you would see it and that is that nuclear power grows. So here you can see 17 percent and in 2010 it grows or it grew to 67 percent. So that's really simple straightforward. Uh, then we look at the two different charts. Here in 1990 we can see that it is relatively balanced. Uh, and then I go into details. So coal and natural gas are at 28%, and then we have oil, nuclear, and hydro. Nuclear is the biggest in 2010, all right, quite clear. So again, it's a bit of a difference here. It's balanced, and here we have one dominating power source. And then I go into the details here with coal and oil. Now, I do highlight something very important. Uh, natural gas had the biggest fall. All right, so it went from natural gas being 28% to being 4%. That is a big uh, reduction. Same, similar situation has happened with hydroelectricity. It's gone from 6% down to 2%. So remember, uh, we do pay attention to the ones that grow. And that is important growth. But I do always want to highlight, look at the ones that change the most, especially this one. This is very common. Here it's 28%. Here it's 4%. That is a massive reduction, and it's the biggest change. So yes, while it's interesting that this has gone from 17% to 67%, so it's, it's about triple quadrupled. Uh, its percentage, it's actually the natural gas that has the biggest change and you will want to highlight that in your answer. So here in my answer it was very simple. We have two pie charts uh, so I will have one paragraph introducing the task, one paragraph for each pie chart. Looking at the first paragraph I get this done very very quickly. The charts show the percentage of electricity production. I make very few changes. Do not spend two, three minutes paraphrasing. Put it in quickly. Don't think about it too much. Um, if, you're, if you're able to do it in under a minute and make all these cool changes, that's fine. Don't spend too much time worried about paraphrasing. Uh, then I've got here, overall, nuclear power became the main source over the period. So I very simply put that in here as my overall. You're going to need that for that higher score 7 or 8. Now here in my next paragraph in 1990 I've clearly shown that this is going to be the paragraph about the first pie chart. The energy sources were relatively balanced. Now this is really important. Um, that first paragraph tells you everything. This shows you the trend which I will now follow with more data. All right. So coal and natural gas were the main sources of energy. Trend at 
each data. So remember that. Follow the trend with the data. After that, next, secondly, whatever you want. I prefer after that. Uh, it's invisible. When you write first, second, it's very obvious what you're doing. This is a little bit smoother. It shows a little bit more knowledge of writing and a little bit more style. Oil made up, and this is important, past tense, 22% and nuclear 17%. So I don't give a lot of detail here. Uh, I don't think it's really that important. I've already said they're quite balanced. The numbers are not uh, very different. So I've left that one quite simple. Hydropower was the least common source. Now this is important. I've shown you another trend. It's the small one and then I follow it with the data at a mere 6%. Beautiful little word there, a mere 6%. Uh, you could compare it to the other ones. I mean, I don't think it's necessary here, but you know, it's about a quarter of the size of the other ones. But I've just gone with substantially lower than any of the other sources. So that could be which was or which is substantially lower than any of the other sources. I would probably use was, I just omit it, substantially lower than any of the other sources. Next paragraph, very simple, by 2010, we're now in the next paragraph, nuclear power had clearly become the main source of energy. So grammar point, past perfect. By 2010, nuclear power had become. So we're looking at getting a range of grammatical structures. Now we're getting range. The share of energy from nuclear power had nearly quadrupled, comma, so I've given the trend, and I've highlighted it using quadrupled, comma, increasing to 67%, which is more than all the other sources put together. Obviously, anything over 50% is, um, but again, I've simply highlighted it there for fun. Uh, which is more than all the other sources put together. The rest of the energy sources fell dramatically. All right. So again, uh, I don't recommend always using these fell dramatically, rose slightly. They're not wrong, but don't rely on them too much. But make sure if you use them, get them right. Uh, you don't want to be writing fall dramatic or dramatic fell, right? fell dramatically, full stop. Then I go into details. Coal's share, and that should have a apostrophe there, my mistake. There it is. Coal's share of energy production fell, comma, dropping to 13%. Again, we're looking at more range in our grammar. We've now got participle clauses. And then again, comma, which was less than half its initial share. Now here's again another participle clause, adjective clause in this case, which was, but I've taken that out, less than half its initial share. Then I give another detail, natural gas fell even more dramatically. Again, a nice comparison. Dropping to a mere 4%. So again, that word comes back. Don't worry about repeating it twice in two paragraphs. It's not a big deal. Um, but again, you've seen that um, comma ing. Now, I could change this. I could say natural gas dropped even more dramatically, comma, falling to a mere 4%. That would actually look a bit better um, because you would have a range of grammar and vocabulary. Also, this comma ing structure, it's all over these videos. It's almost this invisible grammar point. Um, you can repeat it three or four times with different words, and it looks different every time. So do watch the video. You'll see them everywhere in my other videos. Oil only made up 13%. I'm going to change that, give you a bit more vocabulary. There you go. Oil only accounted for 13%, a notable fall. Hydropower also fell to 
still the lowest share of all the other sources. So in that case, I've highlighted and I've maintained uh, this cohesion between the two paragraphs. I mentioned in the second paragraph, hydropower is the least common. In this paragraph, I connect it again. So now I've got cohesion between the paragraphs. So throughout my response, it's all connected. Um, I've made sure this is really one of the key points I would say here. Natural gas fell even more dramatically, dropping to a mere 4%. So it's dropped to about one-seventh of its original value. I've highlighted that adequately here. One thing I might do to increase uh, the highlight here and it possibly improve my task achievement score is add this sentence right here. This was the biggest change over the 20 year period. Um, I could say decrease, but generally it is the biggest change. I always want to look for that, highlight it, and mention it in my responses, and there it is. So that would give you 151 words. Uh, that is not including my first sentence. The first sentence I'm not counting because I haven't changed it very much. Uh, this would now probably be about 160 words because I've added this sentence in here. That's it, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, like and subscribe. Check out the other many videos on Task 1 Academic for your IELTS writing test, and I'll see you again soon.